Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Good morning, good morning. I shouldn't have to tell you what it is today. You know what it is, boy. We get to come alive today. That's the day we all came alive, you feel me? All right, all right. For those who don't know where you are, we'd like to welcome you to River Life Chapel Hill. If this is your first time, welcome. You are now family. You are not just a visitor. We got love for you. Even if you don't know what's going on, we're going to show you what's going on because we love to praise the Lord up in here. Can I get an amen, River Life? Amen. Can I get an amen, River Life? Amen, amen. amen. So um, we're going to welcome you and just let you know, um, if you go through the four-year double doors right here to your right, you got your restrooms. We got refreshments over here. Everybody say refreshments. We have tea. We have coffee. Might have a few little niblets over there. Just something to keep you energized as you feast on the word and you actually uh, begin to just sow in the spirit with your praise and worship. I'm going to call my wife up here with me because she's going to do our prayer. Come on, baby. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'm looking like that. You know how I roll. All right. So um, we just want to go ahead and welcome you guys into service today. But not just as a regular service. This is Resurrection Sunday, and we know what that means. Um, that means that we have a Savior that is risen, and he loves us. As Graham Cook says, he loves us because he loves us, because he loves us, because he loves us. There ain't nothing you can do about his love. His love is just here. It's waiting for you every day. Every night, the Lord is waiting for you. He wants to love on you. He wants to cherish you. He appreciates you, and he just wants to love on you. Amen. So we open those doors for you here at River Life, and we just let the Lord have his way. Amen. Yeah, he loves us. He loves us 100% of the time, and there's nothing that we can do to stop his love. So, God, we just thank you this morning. God, we bless you for the action of love that you did when you sacrificed your life for us on the Christ on the on the cross this morning. So we just lift you up. We just, just declare that Christ is king this morning in the name of Jesus. God, rest, rule, and abide in this service. God, as we just celebrate you, as we celebrate the love that, that you have for us, God, this morning in the name of Jesus. God, come in and just saturate us God move like never before in this service God we just want to see you high and lifted up God we want to see the train of glory filling this temple this morning in the name of Jesus God and we just say rain on us rain on us rain on us rain on us we just declare you for who you are this morning God we bless you God and we do this God in remembrance of you God God we do it in remembrance Remembrance of you remembering God, remembering what you've done for us. Ha! In the name of Jesus. Oh God, in remembrance of you. Better. We lift you up this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise him. Let's go. Let's just stand. Exalt the King. Oh, we give you our hearts this morning.
King seated on the throne. The glory is yours forevermore. Celebrate the Son, look at what He's done. The blood of the Lamb has Sing blood. celebrate. Celebrate the King seated on the throne. The glory is yours forevermore. Celebrate the Son, look at what He's done. The blood of the Lamb has over. Greatest days, the greatest days are still ahead. Oh, He's just getting started. Lips will raise, the, lips the loudest praise. Oh, it's just Sing getting the started. Days. The, greatest days the greatest days are still ahead. Oh, He's just getting started. Our lips will raise the loudest praise. Oh, we're just getting started. is holy and matchless in glory. He's worthy, he's worthy of highest Ooh, praise. Worthy. Who else is worthy of matchless in glory? He's worthy, he's worthy of highest praise. Who else is holy and matchless in glory? He's worthy, he's worthy of highest praise. Who else is holy and matchless in glory? He's worthy, he's worthy of highest praise. Who else is holy and matchless in glory? He's worthy, he's worthy of highest praise. getting started our lips will raise the loudest praise oh it's just getting started the greatest days are still ahead oh he's just getting started our lips will raise the loudest praise oh he's just getting started
His praise. We give you praise, the highest praise. We give you praise, the highest praise. We give you praise, the highest praise. dwell in us and dwell among us. And in the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Sing praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Praise forever to the King of Kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. We sing praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit. For good, for the Lamb had conquered dead, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ 
was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old Shall not kneel, shall not fade By His blood and in His name In His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me like the tide rolling in taking up the space where shame has lived receiving all that you died to give let the wind blow let the tide roll Till the earth knows You're a God of love Let my dry bones Sing a new song All the glory To the God of love Hey! valley of dry bones, rattling moving bone to bone, you breathe a breath of life into our lungs, marching on our knees we march to love, let the wind blow, let the tide roll Till the earth knows 
you're a God of love. Let my dry bones sing a new song of the glory to the God of
the time go Till the earth knows You're the God of love To you are You're a God of love To you are You're the God of defies us to even believe it, to accept it. It says, be filled with strength in your inner man so that you can comprehend the, the love of God, the depths, the lengths, the widths. It's not, it's so beyond our ability to cram inside of our skull. It defies explanation. It defies understanding. It's, you grasp it for a moment, but it's bigger than you can really just easily digest. So Holy Spirit, we pray that you would give us strength to comprehend, Lord, your love in a greater way because your love is a greater thing than we've yet comprehended. Yeah. At moments, we've comprehended it in a greater way, but it's still greater than what we've comprehended yet. Give us strength to comprehend your love. Yeah. Hey 
face I'll cry out because you're holy, holy, holy. Thank you this morning. We thank you for fresh revelation, a 
of who you are, Lord, that you are alive. You are alive in us today and your love, you are a God of love. This morning when we were worshiping um, and before we started worshiping, Jamar was saying, he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because that is who he is. I know many of us have heard Graham Cook speak those words and and I just was, while we were worshiping, I felt like the Lord was just his love. I could just feel his love for us this morning. And I felt like the Lord was saying, he reminded me of just recently, we went to our daughter. She was playing um, for the state championship and their basketball team was in several games that were high intensity at the end. And, and there was one game in particular where it came down to the best player was right up our best player was right up at the foul line and it was like we were within points difference and she went to the foul line and it was like high stress the whole you know the whole um gym was just like you know all the parents were just being parents you know just hollering and you just feel the like if you were in any kind of intense place i felt like lord help her in this moment because this is a lot of pressure for a teenager and the funny thing was she made the baskets I mean just sunk them and later Matthew asked the coach like what did you say to her because I think even the other team called timeout you know how they try to do just totally freeze you out make make you messed up and he said what did you say to her I just need to know what did you say to her and he said miss it make it I love you that's what he said and he said and he kept saying to her miss it make it I love you and this morning while we were worshiping I felt the Lord just saying miss it make it I love you in other words she was just he the Lord was just saying that's my love for you it's not about what we do it's the fact that we're his child and he wants us to know the pressures off the pressure is off. I just feel him just taking that pressure valve and going, shh, you know? It's like, you need to know this morning, the pressure is off. The love of the Father is here. He has done, he's paid the price, he's made the way, he has risen and he's come to meet with us this morning. And he wants you to know he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because that's what he, that's who he is and you are a son and a daughter this morning. So if you come here carrying any kind of pressure in your life, let the Father lift that pressure off with these words, miss it or make it, I love you. The pressure's off. And you know, he's already made it. That's what we're celebrating this morning with the resurrection, is he made it, y'all. He made it. He made it. So we're going to take communion right now. And how many people feel blessed and honored that we get to partake of him, the one who made it, the one who sank death and hell and destruction for us. And uh, Paul wrote these words to the church. He said, for I want to pass this on to you that I received from the Lord himself. The Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, what we celebrated on Friday, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. That's the shot that he sank, metaphorically. This is the deal. This is the shot. This is the covenant. It's done. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink of it. Now, here's what really stood out to me this morning. For every time. Everybody say every time. Every time. Every time. Now, we do communion about once a month. It can seem like same old, same old. But I want you to hear this from the Lord this morning. Every time, every time you eat this and drink this, you're announcing something. You're announcing the Lord's death until he comes. And with his death comes his resurrection. 
With his pain comes his glory. This is what we're doing this morning. Now let me say this. If you have never met Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and been born again, you're in a good place today. Come to this communion table. I'm going to be standing right over here. Come over here and say, hey, you know that you said, Pastor? That's me. I need Jesus in my life. I want you to come. What a better time than on Easter Sunday, on the Resurrection Glory Day, to come and meet your Lord and Savior for the very first time. Come on over here. Let's, let's see the Lord come into your heart and your life and then take your very first communion. How about that? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to close your eyes by it. I'm just saying boldly just walk up here when everybody else is coming. Before you take of the body and blood, come over here to me and say, Hey, Pastor, will you pray with me? Are you guys good? So why don't you stand with me? We're going to bless this as, as David and Kathy are coming to serve. Lord, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, that you are in the room, that your presence and your glory is rich among us. I can even sense like the Lord is here in this place with us today. We ask you to bless these communion elements. May they bring healing to our bodies, to our minds, to our, our spirits, Lord. May they bring salvation to those who you're knocking on the door of their heart right now. And we just thank you. We praise you. Amen. All right, little housekeeping. We got a full room, or pretty full. So why don't you do this? Why don't you start from the back, come down the middle aisle, and go out around whichever side you're sitting out. That way we got a traffic flow. Grab your juice and your cracker and hold on to it. We're going to say, we're going to do this all together, unified this morning, okay? So it might be a little different than what you're used to, but hold on to your elements, and then we'll pray in just a few minutes after everybody's got it, all right? Everybody good? So come on, don't be shy. There you go. They're coming from the back. I'll be right over here if you want to pray.
Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Father, that you had a plan from the beginning to pay the price so that we can go free, Lord. And that's called resurrection power. And we just celebrate this this morning, Jesus. We give you the glory, Jesus. We give you the honor, Jesus. We give you the praise, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing that. Not a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. You got a lion. This is his body. It was broken for you. Take and eat of him. And this is his blood, the cup of redemption in the Passover. Take and drink of him for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it like you mean it. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but this brother right here and this bear sweater needed redemption. So I'm grateful for the day. You know what I'm talking about? Need it on a regular. Amen. Amen. So I'm glad that we all participated in the communion. That's such a special, special um, occasion that we get to participate in as the body of Christ. But on today, it hit a little different. 
hit a little different. All right, so for those who don't know, this is River Life Chapel Hill. You are welcome here. I'm Jamar. I'm your host today. All right, um, it's not about me. It's about the family. Everybody say family. Family. That's what we about up in here. Now, if you don't know, look around. You're going to see. All right, um, so we just want to welcome all of our new people here, all of our visitors and anybody who's new, or even if you came before and you've just been coming and been coming and you're not a member yet, I ain't gonna say no name. Got some of my family. <laughs> but we have a um, QR code card. You can scan this and it'll give you information about our church, um, who we are, what we believe, our canon, all of that, all the fun, awesome groups that we have, all of the dope stuff that we do. All right, we have all of that here. There's some a, a QR code cards in the foyer. And also, if you just want one, just ask anybody that you see, hey, you know why I get one of those cards? We got you. We also have a visitor info card. Please fill that out. You can fill that out there, or you can fill it out in person. Whatever your choice, we just want to stay connected with you. We want to do life with you. All right? Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, dismiss these babies, because they got to go to children's church. We're going to dismiss these babies, and we're going to take a second to greet each other. Love you, little daddy. I see you, boy. Good job, Jake. I know my son wanted to come up here and jump on me. So take a second to greet somebody that you don't know or even somebody that you do know. We just love to take this time to show each other love and to just to greet one another. My boy. Ah. I was after you, bro. <laughs> I know, man. I got to get there, man. I got to get to your room, but I got to get after you, bro. Ain't nobody going to stop me, bro. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. It's going it's to wreck me, though. All right, we'll give y'all about 30 more seconds to find your seat. And we got my brother Ben up here, he's going to say something sweet. All right, but before we get to that, we are going to start our offering. Offering. Let's say, oh, y'all know, y'all know, okay, if you're a visitor, this is how we do offering up here. I say offering, you say, yeah, offering. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. There you go. Come on, man. That's how you walk in them blessings, man. Come on now. You get blessings when you give blessings, all right? God loves a cheerful giver, man. It's not about how much you can give. It's about what you can give out of your heart with purity. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Took me a minute to learn that. When I learned it, though, that vault started cracking. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So you see these two handsome young gentlemen up here. They, these two teenagers. You got one wearing pink, one purple. They're coming down the aisle. Y'all show them some love and make sure you give something to the Lord, all right? Got my brother Ben up here. Come on up here, man. You know, we tight. You ain't got to be all the way over there, bro. You know how we do. This is my boy. You know how tight we are. I just found out Ben, when he FaceTimed me, when he was out there on ministry, I thought the brother was in Mexico. Bro was in Hawaii. He was showing me birds and plants and everything. I was like, bro, I want to go. <laughs> and I had three kids sitting on my lap at the same time when I'm talking to him. So, yeah, not now, but we're going to go. All right, so there are many ways for you to give. You can give in person as you're doing right now by cash or check. You can text River Life CH to 833-570-6827. Bro, can you grab them glasses? You know I need my glasses. Bro, I don't know what I'm doing up here without them glasses. I'll be trying to look like I'm, you know, still got it, but, you know, time's ticking, brother. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and online. Oh, my God, that's HD, y'all. Everybody, that's HD. Online, riverlifechapelhill.com, online. Ooh, it was fuzzy before being, and now it's clear. All right, has everyone had a chance to give? All right, we're going to bless this offering. 
Lord, thank you for this offering. We thank you for the blessings that are connected to this offering. We pray that even those that did not have an opportunity to give what their hearts desire to give to the added into the kingdom, we pray that you bless them, Father, that they can give infinite fold with the gifts, the talents, and their resources, Lord, so that they can add unto the body of Christ as they were designed to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We got my boy Big Ben up here with some announcements. Let him know something, Ben. Let him know something. <laughs> How y'all doing this morning? Uh, we don't got too many announcements today, but um, as y'all probably know by now, if you don't, if you're new, we do a UNC Praise and Worship Tent every week, every Tuesday on campus, on UNC campus. What's the name of that, that library? The Wilson? The, outside the Wilson Library in the main quad, and it's from 10 to 2. Y'all can come and join us if you would like to. If not, just keep us in your prayers. Lord, the Lord has been doing so much. We've been able to pray for so many students, talk to so many students, just be able to build a relationship with these people as they walk by, and it's been so, so good. So, yeah, just keep us in your prayers. But that's all we got for today. I'll hand it back over to Jamal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you look good, don't you? Well, I love you, boy. Give me some. Mm. That's my brother. All right, so we're going to have... Yeah, you got this, bro. I ain't yeah, got to yeah. say that. So we got to say goodbye to some folks that are near and dear to our hearts uh, today. So y'all give it up for Vicky and Gary Keith. Y'all come on up here. Oh, Vicky went back. Well, you just have to stand in. Sarah, come on up here. So Gary and Vicky have been in our church for a number of years now, and the Lord is moving them to Pennsylvania for this season. Just stand right here. We're just going to pray for you. Moving them to Pennsylvania. So this is their last Sunday. I guess you got to have a last Sunday. Easter's a good time to do it. But um, So we just wanted to pray for them as a, as a fellowship, as a body, as a family, and just send them on their way with blessings. And we've had some great, great time, some parties for them and that kind of thing. But uh, we just really bless you, Gary. Thank you for, for serving and loving all of us. How many people have been loved on by Gary or Vicky? And, uh, you know, Gary's played the bass for a number of years and led worship in small groups and all kinds of stuff. So y'all just agree with us. Lord, we just thank you for the Keats. We thank you that all their lives you have been faithful, Lord. And we just thank you that they're a picture of that faithfulness and you're just getting started. You're just, like we sang, you're just getting started. And so we ask as they, as they set out in the next couple of weeks to Pennsylvania, Lord, we ask you to bless them, to keep them, to put your favor upon them, to overshadow them with your peace, with your shalom, Lord. We just thank you for them. May their family be blessed, their grandchildren be blessed, their finances be blessed, their health be blessed. In every way, we send them from Chapel Hill with a blessing. In Jesus' name. Yeah, in Jesus' name. There you go, Vicky. <laughs> you, you got it. You're not, you're not left out. And everybody said? Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a hand. Yeah, yeah. Blessings. Blessings. All right. All right. Well, how about this beautiful day? Every Easter should be this nice. I didn't even need a jacket when I walked out this morning. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? How many people got a ham or something in the oven? You got something cooking for lunch? I know. I'm going to stop talking about food. There goes that pastor again talking about food right when I... <laughs> I used to hate it when pastors did that. Like, God, now I'm doing it. In my, in my Jesus time this morning, about 7 o'clock or so, I just closed my eyes, and I had my, a, a song playing. I was just worshiping, and I closed my eyes, and I just, it's like, you know those visions in your mind? I just saw all of a sudden this picture of a good Friday Jesus, meaning Jesus with the crown of thorns and the torture and the skin ripped from his body. I saw that Jesus, but just that quick it turned into that beautiful resurrected Christ. He turned into this glow, this glory that was upon him. And I don't know if I have words to explain this, but all I can say is it like it made me love him again all over again. It made me it it just it just increased my love. Don't you love Jesus? 
And what I want to do this morning is I hope that you can experience the love of Jesus like we have, like I have, like so many have. And if you've experienced the love of Jesus, I hope you experience it even more. I believe, I'm a firm believer that you can never get enough of the love of Jesus. In fact, we will go for our whole lifetime and never get enough because the love of Jesus, the Bible says, is beyond comprehension. It's beyond description. It's beyond your wildest imagination. The greatest love that you can have here on the earth. Anybody ever been in love before? I mean, I'm really in love with that girl right there. I mean, really, like seriously in love. I don't know if I'm in love with Jamar and Jessica. I mean, they might, I'm just picking on you. I don't know about Donovan and Danielle or Stephen Martha Bollinger or, you know, Evan and Donna. I don't know if we can beat that, but I'm pretty in love. But the greatest love, it fails in comparison. The love that Jesus has for us. It's so powerful. And um, I've been in the series on first, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. Who knows 2 Timothy 1.7? Say it with me. For we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Who heard the power and love in there? The power and love, it goes beyond description. We've seen so many moves of God. I was talking to these new friends this morning about the Jesus movement of which their whole family was saved in 1975-ish, somewhere in there. Man, that was a move of God of the love of Jesus, wasn't it? Like, I mean, I don't know that, that it, was, it was legendary. I was a baby. I mean, I don't remember it. I remember the residual effects of it and the stories of it. And how many know we've seen moves of God of the power of God? I mean, healing, signs, wonders, some great, all going way back 100 years, some of the greatest like move, movers and shakers in the kingdom of the power of God. And uh, a few weeks ago, if you're visiting with us this morning or you're new, we had a, a guest speaker, a pastor from Charlotte, who has seen a move of God in their church in the last year. And here's what he told us. He said, We've seen power, we've seen love, but I believe we're going to see a move of God that has an emphasis upon a sound mind. And when he said that, something moved in my spirit. That's all I can say. I was like, oh my, oh my. Are we in ever in a greater need in, a, uh, in, in this mental health crisis of a sound mind? And a move of God, that emphasis on a sound mind, will also result in the greatest move of God of power the world's ever seen and of love. It's not like the other two are a part of it. No, but this thing about the sound mind, or say this with me. I love this phrase, the mind of Christ. Did you know the same mind that was in the man God, Jesus? The patterns, the way he thought about stuff, which I don't know about you, but it's different than usually the way I think. The way he never saw lack. He saw disease, and that was easy. He saw whatever. You know how it is. Read the Gospels. That same mind, that capacity is already in you. It's already in you. And so it's just so convenient that on Resurrection Sunday, this one's on power. It's on the power of God. Before we get to that, though, I want to talk, I want to read um, the resurrection, just some snapshots from the resurrection passage in the Gospel of John. So go to John 20 with me. You can turn there or you click there. It's provided on the screen if you got neither. God bless you. Uh, <laughs> but I will say this. A sound mind enables you to experience the fullness of the power of the resurrection. Did y'all catch that? A sound mind enables you to experience the fullness of the power of the resurrection. Because that sentence says that, 2 Timothy 1, we've not been given a spirit of what? A spirit of fear. See if you pick up on one of the disciples' crippling fear within the passage that we're reading. It says, early on Sunday morning, John 20, verse 1, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. 
She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Let's skip down to verse 6. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed that the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth had covered Jesus' head was folded up, lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciples who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. I love that part. Then they went home. I'm going home. I, so you got two entrances of fear here already in the story. Number one, where did they take the body? Jesus, our, all our hopes and dreams were dashed yesterday. Saturday was the longest day in history. Uh, the Savior in the grave, not risen yet. We, we don't know where this body is. That scares me. I'm afraid of that. Okay, and then the second thing is, it says until then, even though Jesus had clearly told them what was about to happen. Actually, on multiple occasions, it says, has anybody ever tried to tell you something, but you still, it's like you heard it, but you didn't get it. This is what's happening here, and they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said that Jesus has to rise from the dead. So if you don't understand that, on any level, it's not computing. You've heard it, but I didn't know he had to die and rise from the dead. How much fear has just entered into your story? Oh, God, let me get this straight. We thought he was the guy. Everything seemed to line up. We know the prophecies, but he dead. <laughs> now what? Have you ever lost a loved one? You know what it's like, right? Right? Have you ever lost a friend? Unexplainably, early death. I, I've had that with two friends. Both of them, one was 31, the other was 32. One died of being murdered, the other died of cancer at age 32. It's just like, there's a lot of fear there. With the one who was murdered, it was a home invasion. I remember crippling fear with having my shotgun <laughs> loaded beside my bed and sitting there just Listening in the night, am I going to be the next one? I mean, I know it doesn't make sense, y'all, right? But that's what fear is. It's nonsensical. And then with my friend Chris, he died of melanoma. I remember every time after he passed, every time I got in the shower, I'm like, oh, is that a spot? Is that, what is that? Oh, do I feel this? Has anybody ever been there? Again, I know God's going to take care of me, but this fear is entering into this story. And I think in order to get the fullness of the power of the resurrection, you first have to get into the depths of the fear. You have to see it is what I mean. Let's skip down for the sake of time to verse 24. 2024 of John. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin. I love it. Anybody ever have a friend named Twin? <laughs> this is Twin right here. <laughs> we'll call him Twin just for fun, Jamal. <laughs> twin was not with the others when Jesus came, and they told him, we've seen the Lord. And, t and Twin goes, oh, yeah, I know what you mean. He told us what's going to happen, right? No. Now, remember, Twin is a guy who he is one of the 12, Right? Thomas has been with the Lord this entire three years of his ministry. I mean, day one, you could go back for how he was called. I mean, he saw the dude multiply loaves and fish. He saw him raise the dead. He saw him defy the elements and walk on water. But the human condition says that sometimes even all of that is not enough when fear has entered your heart. You see, in another, uh, trans, or another gospel, it says they were all hiding behind closed doors in fear. Do you blame them? I do not blame them one bit. In fact, if it was Matthew Bollinger, I probably would have been right there with him. In fact, I wouldn't be behind a door. I would have already fled north. Like, I'm, I'm out of here. Like, what is going on? I ain't dying for this. You know what I mean? But by the grace of God, I wouldn't. But you know what I'm just saying? If you look into your own humanity... But he replied, and here's an, 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 an example of the unrenewed, the non-mind of Christ, the fearful mind. So the twin replied, I won't believe it. I won't believe it. I just, I can't believe it unless 
I see the nail wounds in his hands for myself. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, here he is. The man, Jesus, was standing among them. Shalom, peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Now, isn't Jesus so kind? He knew. I mean, he had heard. He knew what his fear was. He knew how much of a realist this guy was. He's a, if I can't taste it, touch it, feel it, smell it, it ain't real kind of guy. Is anybody like that? Put your finger, look at my hands, put your hand into the wound in my side. And then here's the clincher. Don't be faithless any longer. Don't be faithless any longer. In the Passion Translation, it says, it translates that same phrase, don't give in to your doubts any longer. Don't give in to your fear any longer, church. Don't give in to the naysayers any longer. Don't give in to those who say the power of God is not for today any longer. I had one of those conversations this week with a good brother in Christ. He was making an argument that it's possible that God could heal people today, but not probable. And you know, my response, I was like, oh yeah, well, like a month ago, I was in Armenia and there was a deaf lady there and I laid my hands on her ear and said, be open in Jesus name. And she jumped around with her husband because she could hear for the first time in years. And he just kind of like looked at me like, I ain't trying to be a divisive Christian. Nobody wants one of those. I love to unify around the cross, but guys, there's also something at stake here. Like the gospel in its fullness, it contains power. It's the power of God unto salvation. I'm never going to apologize for that. Bless him. I love him. Don't be full of faith or full of fear any longer, but, but, get, but believe. That's the statement. Believe with an exclamation point. And what was the twins' response? My God. <laughs> I hear people saying, my God, my Lord and my God. I just see him almost fall into his knees in a puddle of weeping. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. You see, in this passage of John 20, Thomas was like many Christians. He represents maybe some of us in this room in every kind of church today. He doubted until he could see it. He had a little bit of faith, but not all the faith, unless he could experience with his own five senses what he believed to be true or not true. Now, this is a whole nother sermon, but let me just tell you this. Here's what I've learned. Is spiritually, for all your five senses, you also have five spiritual senses. It's very common. You, everyone knows this. You know the many passages where Jesus tells the people following him? He says, hey, this is only for those who can see or only for those who can hear. Is he talking about what you see with your eyeballs? No. Or what you can hear with your eardrum? No, he's talking about spiritually. There's also spiritual, the other three senses. And so the way to stay in faith is to ask Holy Spirit to help you make a rhythm or a pattern in your life of practicing Experience the kingdom of heaven all around you in the spirit. I often walk around and say, okay, Lord, what do I see right now? Or he'll say that to me. He's not meaning physically. He's meaning what do you see with the eyes of your spirit? What can you hear? Has anybody, this is a different one, but has anybody ever smelled something in the spirit? I don't, I've got a little bit of, I have smelled the sweet rose of Sharon in some meetings, and then I've also experienced on the dark side the stench of demon spirits. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Usually it's more of like a rotten egg sort of smell. But sometimes, and not all the time, it's sort of mysterious, but sometimes you can just almost smell like something is not right. Why am I saying this? Because 
This is about believe. Believe not. Don't be like the twin here. You see, what's the solution then for this really? Well, the way that you really are going to walk in the five spiritual senses is by receiving the mind of Christ. And let me restate that. You've already received it when you were saved. When you were born again, it's already there. It's really just, as Paul tells us, walk in the Spirit, and you will not. What he's saying is you have the Spirit. It's not like you need to get it. No, you already have it. You just need to step into it. Step into the mind of Christ today. A sound mind enables you, like I said at the beginning, to not miss the resurrection. Because that's what he said to me back, and I meant to say this at the beginning, is I was just praying this week, and he said, Matthew, tell my people, don't miss the resurrection. Don't miss the resurrection, y'all. Let me try this side of the room. This side of the room, hey, whatever you do, it's Easter Sunday. Don't miss it. Don't miss the resurrection. What do you mean by that? You could have followed him your whole life, like Tom, like the twin, for three years. He's one of the big 12 apostles, but he could have missed the resurrection. I've been to southern India three times, and you know what the end of the story is in extra-biblical narratives? and legitimate, reliable church history is that the end of the story for Thomas was not only did he believe, but he took the gospel to South Asia, right into southeastern India. I went to the place where they say that he was impaled on the end of the spear for his faith, and that's how he died. So in that, do be like the twin, not impaled on the end of a spear per se, but the faith became deep in him after this experience. If you're here this morning, you say, man, I lack that kind of faith. That's okay. Find your, your solace in the twin here. So did Thomas, and he had seen everything, like I already said. But yet God gave him by his spirit that kind of faith. Therefore, I remind you, Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.6, I remind you, to stir up the spiritual gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For not, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Everybody say power. power. Another use of the word power is in 1 Corinthians 2, 4. And I'm just skipping around here. You don't have to turn there. But Paul came from Athens where he had seen very little fruit when he had engaged the philosophy and the gods of the minds with the Athenian philosophers. And he comes to Corinth, the next city-state, and the Holy Spirit says, scrap that. Here's the program now, and here's what he told him that he did. He said, my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, here's what we always say. If, some, if I can talk you into it, life can talk you out of it. I could go out there and mentally convince somebody that they should be a Christian. But how many know that's not exactly the keeping power of God? That's not the thing that's going to keep you. But when a living Jesus steps into your life... The power of God becomes like an energy inside of you. They're like, oh my God, I never knew about this. This is the kind of power that we're talking about. I know this, you know, and this whole sound mind thing, I think one thing that resonates with me is because when I was 19, I had a mental breakdown, like a bad one. My parents could tell you the story later. A bad mental breakdown, like in the, headed to the Charter Ponds Mental Hospital, talking to psychiatrists didn't sleep for an entire week, um, like bad. And in a moment, and the one thing I prayed that week is, God, if you're real, I'll serve you for the rest of my life if you give me one thing, and that is peace in my mind, a sound mind. And he did. He did on the seventh day. Isn't that interesting? The seventh day. I just thought about that. On the seventh day, just like the creation account. On the seventh day in the pools of baptism in my parents' swimming pool. No pastor, no priest there, just mom and dad. I mean, I go down there, surely filled with a legion of demons, which has got me into this whole mess in my walking away from the Lord as a teenager and in college. 
I go into that pool. I come up. My eyes cleared. I like Jesus came into my body. I look in the mirror and I would see like fire in my eyes. I mean, sort of literally. I don't know how else to explain that. And I could just feel like this surging running through my body. And this was an encounter like Paul on the road to Damascus is the way I think about it. With a living, I didn't literally see him, but I could feel his nearness. It was the power of God. So that's why I believe in the answer for a mental health pandemic in our world, in our nation. It's, it's the power of God, y'all. He's there for each and every person who calls on his name, just like he was for Matthew. I know what this is like, literally, physically. And here's a prayer that Paul prayed in Ephesians 1 that I would recommend you. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but pray the Ephesians 1 prayer over your life and over your family, over your mind, over your body. Here's an excerpt from it, and it's verse 19. And so as I read this, we're also going to pray. We're actually going to pray three biblical prayers this morning. Are you guys good? All right, I don't want to go too long on you. I know that ham is waiting. but <laughs> Paul says, I also pray, verse 19, that you will understand the incredible greatness. That's what I, the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. So I think the only difference between my Christian brother that I was telling you about, that I had that discussion with about the power of God this week, the only difference between me and him is, for whatever reason, he has not yet experienced the incredible greatness of God's power. The incredible greatness of God's power. So, Lord, we pray that. That even this morning, today, on, on Resurrection Sunday, that we would experience the incredible greatness of your power for us who believe. Because why? It goes on, this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. See, y'all, I'm crazy enough to believe. I'm not crazy, but I, I believe this enough to believe that at age 19, that power that hit me in the swimming pool, in the baptismal waters is really the same power that heaven poured out for a dead man, Jesus of Nazareth, to be in the grave and on the third day come again. I believe that same power can touch you. And I believe it can touch your family member. I believe the same power could touch your neighbor or your classmate. Well, how's that going to happen? Believe. Everybody say believe. believe. See, it all starts with believing. You, on Easter Sunday, please, I beg you, just believe it's true. And see what God can do with that. Yeah. Six years ago, I was in uh, right here in, in Chapel Hill. We had been in this building on Sunday morning for about a year. And I got a really strange email one day. And it was from an Indian man in India whose nephew had come to Chapel Hill with his family, his wife, um, to work for a short period of time. So he was one of those Indian young men who in the RTP worked for an American company, you know, and he did it remotely, usually from India, but he had come here. And while he was here, he was only 40 years old. He had a massive stroke. And he had landed in ICU at UNC Hospital. And so the reason I got this email is the family member frantically was online looking up churches and pastors in Chapel Hill who believed in the power of God. <laughs> and, and so, I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but it's like sort of kind of funny. Like when you're in a desperate place like that for your loved one, you think like the pastors is the main place. You, there, would, there should be tens, dozens of answers to that email. And I'm not toot my own horn, but apparently I was the only one that responded. I said, yes, sir. Oh, we will go pray for him. Well, at that time, we had a, another a family from India in our church, this guy named Vin. They've since moved to another, another state. And um, I just, I, I texted Vin. I was like, Vin, I'm going to pray for this guy. Man, we got to need God to move big time. Will you go with me? He's like, yes, Pastor, I'll meet you there. You know, so we meet over there. We're in the parking deck. We say a short prayer. I'll never forget walking into that hospital room, y'all. It was crazy. I mean, I was scared, honestly. 
because I was just like, oh, God. It, have you ever been in one of those moments like, Lord, if you don't show up, we're just done. Like, hey, ain't, ain't nothing going to I can't do anything. I don't know this guy. We walk into the hospital room, and the, um, uh, the man's name was, I'm sure this is a shortened version of his name, Ragu, okay? Ragu's sister was over on the other side of the bed praying with her back turned. When we walked in, she turned around and goes, oh, and she's like, I thought y'all were angels. I was like, no, we're not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're not angels. And she goes, I was just praying. God, if you want to raise my brother up, would you send people, would you send some, you know, do something. And that's when y'all walked in the room. We're like, okay, well, that's a good sign. I got to give all the credit and glory to God and my brother, Vin. Vin, something comes over him. It's like, it's the gift of faith. And so that's a whole nother sermon. But sometimes faith will come on you that's not yours. Like all of a sudden, like you do something like, was that me? Because I don't know where that came. Then practically is grabbing the guy. He's not. But he's like, Ragu, I command you in the name of Jesus, you're going to get up. You're going to walk out. I mean, and we're just sitting and nothing happens. And like he just keeps after it. And I'm kind of like thinking about the nurses you know? <laughs> I hate to say it, but I'm kind of like the twin at this moment. Like, oh, okay, I believe. Help my unbelief. Like, what are we going to do? Nothing's happening. But Vin just keeps, he's like, man, he's just going after it. And so we pray, and we leave that room, and nothing visibly, you know, he's, he's unresponsive. He's got all the tubes and everything in ICU. Two weeks later, I'm up here worshiping right there where we always sit. And right where you guys are sitting, I didn't know they had come in, but I turned around during some part or after the service, and it was um, Ragu's wife and his sister. They found the church, and they came, and she said, you guys left, and within two weeks, the doctors had told us that he would never walk or talk again. It's impossible. His brain has gone through too much trauma. And two weeks later, he walked out of that hospital room, and they were flying home later that week. It's not me. It's, this is the power of God. And I believe that we can and we will see that happen over and over and over and over again if we'll simply do what? You just got to believe you got an email, like, oh, God, I wasn't feeling like this great gift of faith when I got the email. I was just like, well, I got to be obedient. I'm just going to go there. I'm not the healer Jesus is. Let's just see what God could do. Jody and Marty, happy Easter, happy resurrection. I could tell you a whole other story about that lady in ICU on death's door. Remember that, Marty? And Marty's like, of course, how could I not remember? We go in there, we're trying to worship. Marty and I aren't the best singers in the world. <laughs> and Jody walks out of ICU after being deathly ill with the flu. That happened right when COVID was shut in hospital. Like anybody been able to go to a hospital? You couldn't go in. I mean, literally, I think it was the next day when even as a pastor, I wouldn't have been able to get into that, host, into that ICU room. We go in there and pray for Jody, and look at her. She's still sitting here this morning. Listen, please understand, especially if you're new, I'm not trying to hype anything up. I don't even like that. It kind of makes my stomach turn sometimes to turn on a, like some evangelist on TV or something like that. And I'm not judging them. I'm just saying this is really not about hype. It's about what is this day about? It's about the power of the resurrection. In the Greek, the word power here is this word dunamis. And has anybody ever heard the word dunamis? Here's what it literally means from the concordance. Force, miraculous power, ability, abundance. I thought that one's interesting. Might, a worker of miracle, power or strength. So what we're celebrating today on Resurrection Sunday is that prayer. I just want to briefly look at two additional short, powerful prayers on this. Because not only did dunamis power enable the resurrection, but dunamis power came to live on the inside of us. Tap your neighbor and say, he's talking to you now. It came to live 
on the inside of you. I know that might seem obvious, but on Easter, I think we get so focused as we should on what our Savior did. Well, of course he could do that. He was God. I mean, he's all powerful. He can do anything, anytime, anyone, whatever he wants to do. Yeah, but it goes further than that. And actually, I believe that the ultimate goal of salvation wasn't to get us to heaven. The ultimate goal, yes, I can't wait to go to heaven. I'm thankful for heaven, but the ultimate goal was to fill us with power. Now, one of my favorite preachers says this. He says, the, the power of God is in me for me, but he's on me for you. The power of God is in me for me, and he's on me for you. Now, what do you mean by in me for me? Let me, let me just break this down for you. There's three applications. What is the purpose? Well, dunamis power has two in you, internal applications, and it's got one external application that really we've already talked about. Number one, it's the power to live. Number two, the power to love, because you really can't love as he loves without dunamis. I mean, that's what the, that's what the resurrection is all about. Is he did that because of the love that we that the Lord is speaking to us in worship. So the power to live, the power to love, and the power to do. You guys, good. The power to live, here's a prayer, Colossians 1, 9. Jot that down in your Ephesians 1 prayer over yourself and your family. Pray Colossians 1 prayer too. And then there's a Colossians 3 prayer, but Colossians 1, 9, real quickly. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. And your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. Who wants to bear fruit? Who wants their life not just to be something you say, but something you live? You want your life to line up with the Bible, right? You don't want to just be a hearer of the word. You want to be a doer of the word. You want to live. You want to have fruit in your life. It says, all the while you will grow as you learn to know God's be God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power. That's dunamis. You'll be strengthened how? With dunamis. So you will have all the endurance and patience you need. I don't know if anybody's like me, y'all, but I'm, I can be pretty impatient. I, I need some patience. How about endurance? Anybody need to endure how do you actually wait patiently and endure dunamis? Yeah, yeah, we don't often make those connections. It's the dunamis power, and some of the fruit that we read about is endurance and patience. May you be filled with joy. There's another one. Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased, that's today, he purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Resurrection power gives you joy, endurance, patience. I've experienced so many times of just being wrecked by the power and the glory of God in meetings like this, in church services, sometimes in our own home. I've seen people fall out under the power of God. Who's ever seen that before? Let me just tell you, if you're new to that, it's not about that. It's not about whether somebody falls. Again, you can watch something on TV. It looks a little hokey or who's ever been pushed. You know, it's like, I, listen, let's, let's, let's peel all that away. It's about the power of God for one express reason, the fruit that it will produce in your life. Listen, as little boys, my kids, especially my boys because the girls were young, were in the season of on the floor on a regular basis in our church. It was just what God was doing at the time. I have this picture of my friend Marlon Magusu, my Kenyan brother. He's got his big hand on Gabe's forehead. Gabe's on the ground. And you know what I see 12 years later, approximately? No, longer than that, 15 years later, is I see the fruit of the gospel in his life. Now, okay, there's many other things that contribute to this fruit being cultivated and growing, but this is one of the key things. In fact, you might look at it this way. This is where seeds are planted. 
and they begin to grow. They do have to be cultivated. Ultimately, just experiencing the power of God is not enough, but it sure is something. And I don't ever want to discount it. I will never, like Paul said, apologize for the gospel because it's the power. A church that is powerless is just a rotary club. I mean, no offense. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a disunifier. But I'm saying this is the church of Jesus Christ. We are his body now. We need to walk in power. Okay, I'm getting worked up. Are y'all okay? I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> but it's just that I've experienced and seen this thousands and thousands of times all around the world. One of my favorite things is to go to different cultures and different countries and see them. They've experienced exactly the same thing you have. Has anybody had that? It's like, wow, I would never dreamed of Resistencia, Argentina, that people that don't speak the same language as me or Uganda, Africa or whatever would know and love Jesus exactly the same way and experience the power of God on a regular basis. It's the power to live. Number two, it's the power to love. I got to wrap this up. Let me land this plane. Ephesians 3. Okay, so if you're keeping track, Ephesians 1 was the first prayer. Colossians 1 is the second prayer. And the third prayer, power to love, comes from Ephesians 3. And this, we'll save the, the best for last here. I pray, Paul says, by the Holy Spirit, from his glorious unlimited resources, that he will empower you with inner strength. You see that? You want the power to live for Christ. This is where it comes from because that phrase, inner strength, look in your concordance, it's dunamis. That's resurrection power on this Easter Sunday through his spirit. Then Christ will do what? He'll make his home in your heart. Who loves that one? As you trust in him, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the dunamis to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. That's what I was saying earlier. I love that phrase. You experience it, but you can't truly understand the fullness of it because it's just so big. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. His love is really too great for, to understand. If you miss that time during communion to meet Jesus, do it today. I implore you. Recognize that little pounding on your chest right now. The Bible calls that the knock, knock, knock of the Holy Spirit. It says, whoever will, open the door and I'll come walking in. I promise you, you'll never regret it. It'll be the greatest the greatest experience and the greatest decision you ever made in your entire life. You guys stand up with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on up here, Eva. So Eva had a dream, and it went along with what, what Jamar had shared at the beginning about he loves you because he loves you. because. And then what I had, the Lord spoke to me, so I wanted her to share it. Yeah, so when <clears throat> Jamar and Jessica were praying us in, I was very astonished because... I remembered my dream that I had last night. I was here at the church, and I love that audio by Graham Cook where he's talking about the love of God and, and the love of God saying he loves you because he loves you, because he loves you, not because of what you've done, but just because of who he is and who you are. And I, in the dream, I was think I was telling somebody, I don't know who it was, and I was like, we need to make these mixtapes or like we need to make CDs and I know this is old, old, old we wouldn't do this. <laughs> yeah. We need to, to make a mixtape for everybody. And if it, everyone leaves with something today, it will be this <clears throat> CD with that audio on it of he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you. And everyone was leaving with that. And so it's not too late. You know, if you are like Thomas this morning, you're like torn between faith and unbelief he wants to meet you with his love because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you yeah 
Yeah, that's what that I think that's just that's what the Lord wants to give us, you know, that sound mind. We need that washing over our hearts and our minds. And I just feel like, you know, when she said making a mixtape, it's like, take this from the Holy Spirit this morning is that he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because he loves you because that is who he is and it's you can't do anything to make him love you more and you can't do anything to make him love you less and just let that wash over you and I was feeling that same thing of like if you are in that place of like Thomas or if you're in a place where you feel like you're in the grave you feel dead on the inside the, the hope for you this morning is that wasn't the end of the story for Jesus. And that the Lord wants to come and he wants, it's his power. We can't make it happen, but we just get to yield to him and invite him in this morning. And let him love on you as you go throughout your day, as you go throughout your week. What the Lord was saying to me is the pressure is off. He wants to take, unstop that pressure valve and just allow you to know that you make it, you don't. The Lord loves you. It's not about what we do. It's just that, he, like Matthew said, He has done it. He's made it for us. And we get to step in to what He's done in Christ this morning. So. Amen. So let's do this before we leave. And if you might be in here, you say, I need a miracle this morning. You're in the right place. I believe there is faith in the room. The power of God is going to touch people right now. And we got some awesome people full of faith, some ministers in here this morning, uh, like Patrick and Megan. Can you guys come up over here? And Gus and Kenda and Donovan, you guys are over here. David and Kathy, can you come here? Jessica, Jamar, whoever. You guys come up here. Michael, come up here. If you need a miracle this morning, like you need the miracle of salvation. <laughs> Come up here and say, hey, pray for me. That's what they're going to do. And heaven is going to come. It's going to meet you this morning. Don't leave. I'm just, I'm not begging you, but I am. I'm just imploring you, like, get something today on this Resurrection Sunday. You got the whole rest of your day to hang out with family or whatever your plans are. Come, let the Lord touch you this morning. Amen. So I'm going to pray. If you need to go, you can certainly be dismissed. You can be blessed. We love you. We're just so thankful that God brought you here this morning. So Holy Spirit, you are good. Jesus, you blow me away with your love that just saturates us even right now. I, I can feel it like a mist in the room. And so I just pray, Holy Spirit, that these words would bear fruit and that the power of God would be real in our lives. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Come on forward if you want more, you want prayer, or if you need to be, be dismissed, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.